Hello and welcome back to Exothermic Plays Games. I'm Exothermic and the date today is Friday, May 17th, 2024. I've been doing a countdown of my favorite video games of all time through each day of the year and coming in at number 229 is Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. EA decided that sports simulations shouldn't just be limited to real life and turned to juggernaut multimedia franchises to expand their portfolio and their wallets. If you're unfamiliar with the rules for Quidditch, since I know not actually everyone has watched or read Harry Potter, here's a very brief rundown. You fly around on brooms with three hoops at each end of a pitch that work as goals. There's a ball about the size of a volleyball called the Quaffle that you try to throw into the other team's hoops to score for 10 points at a time. Then there's a ball about the size of a softball called the Bludger that gets batted around at people to knock them off their brooms and possibly cause terrible, terrible injuries. Lastly, there's one more ball called the Snitch about the size of a golf ball that flies around through the air. Whoever catches the Snitch ends the game and scores 150 points for their team. In Quidditch World Cup, you primarily play as chasers, which are the people that can shoot the quaffle as you pass it to your teammates to try to score and play defense on the opposing team. Every once in a while, you can press a button to hit the bludger and guide it to collide with the opposing chaser that has the ball. When you're on the receiving end of this, you can try to navigate so that one of your beaters, who have the, a little bat and hit the bludger around, can intercept to protect you and keep possession of the quaffle. As for how you utilize the snitch, there's a little bar at the top of the screen. Every game action each team takes can grow or shrink their side of the meter. When the two ends connect, you'll trigger the snitch chase. The length of your meter works as a boost in your speed and you can recharge your meter by staying on the middle of the trail the snitch leaves. Get close enough to catch it and end the game. The game starts out at Hogwarts and you pick one of the four houses to play through the school's tournament as an extended tutorial. In addition to the basics I talked about, you can do some special moves. Holding the shoulder buttons while passing will allow for combo passes. They're more susceptible to interception from the defense, but if you keep your combo up and score with it, you'll gain a massive boost to how quickly your snitch meter fills up. Assuming you're ahead or confident in your ability to catch the snitch, this is a great way to speed up the game. If you're way behind, however, you may want to avoid it to try to even it out before the snitch chase happens. Defensively, you can hold the special button to do some guaranteed steals, assuming the other player doesn't react fast enough to press the dodge button and keep flying. The really crazy thing though is the team special, which triggers a cutscene that scores guaranteed points. The Defensive Special, Dodge, Bludger, and Team Special all have built-in cooldowns, so make sure to time them right. Once you're done with the Hogwarts part of the game, you can move on to the actual World Cup. There's a lot of different countries you can pick from as your team, and each one has their own Quidditch pitch they play in. One of my favorite things about the game is actually the variety of places to play, as it's a great expansion of the world the game is set in. Most of the teams are available at the start, and you play through the season one game at a time, but there's various challenges you can complete to gain wizarding cards. In addition to being functionally an achievement system before those really existed, it's a way to unlock additional special moves, combo pass variety, and even more teams. Get enough and you'd even be able to play as the Bulgarian team featuring star seeker Victor Crumb. There's not a lot else to the game, and the lower difficulties are painfully easy, but once you get enough wizarding cards to unlock the higher difficulties, there's actually a lot of back and forth action, and the games can be really fun. 
The completionist in me loved collecting all of the wizarding cards growing up, and the 3D effects on them were pretty fun to look at. Join me tomorrow as I talk about the 228th game on my list, where the revolution lives on in the hearts of mice.